Well, good morning. My name is Steve Sinclair. I'm the Vermont State Forester, and I'm really pleased to kick off today's program, Beyond Communications, Advocating for Science and Our Forest. Uh, you know, 2017 marks the 27th year of the Monitoring Cooperative, 27 years, and it's also the first year for the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative. So I certainly want to thank those people in attendance from our neighboring states and new partners from New York, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. Uh, and this is, uh, this is just fantastic that we've been able to take what started off as a Vermont Monitoring Cooperative and turn it into a, a regional entity because let's face it, forest health and the work that we all do in monitoring our forested ecosystem does not know geographic or political boundaries. Uh, and we can't go further without also recognizing uh, not only our new partners, but our long-standing partners, which includes the University of Vermont, Rubenstein School, USDA Forest Service, and of course the uh, agency I work for, the Agency of Natural Resources. I'm looking forward to a really exciting day with a dynamic array of talks and workshops that are truly designed to help collaborators like ourselves to build capacity in communication and marketing of our work to a broader stakeholder audience. And it really is about communications. That's that uh, I think as natural resource managers now, we realize that communication is one of our truly important skills. And we're gonna really zero in and focus in on that uh, today. Uh, and the aim is to help all of us develop messages and share information in such a way that the public sees the value in forest ecosystem monitoring and research in our, re in our region and its relevance to our, to our lives. You know, the, uh, uh, the word communication comes from the Latin to share. And if you look in Webster's Dis Dictionary, it talks about communication as imparting or exchanging information, the means of connection between people and places. And marketing is delivery or exchange of offering of something that has value. And I think that's what we're going to try to focus on today, is how can we market and value to the public the importance of our ecosystem in the region and what it means to people in their everyday lives. Tonight, today's plenary uh, features a keynote on the principles of effective communicating science with practical strategies for participants to use in their work. And there will also be ample time for a question and answer period, so everyone in the audience will have an opportunity to get specifics geared to their own particular uh, work or stakeholder group that they're uh, involved with. And then after our keynote address, we'll have a series of flash talks, little five minute talks, where we really kind of look at how demonstrating communication strategies work on the ground and uh, how we can use to become more effective communicators. And this theme is going to be revisited throughout the day. In the afternoon workshops, we'll also see that we'll be focusing where our morning uh, presenters and others built offering skills on skill building workshops on various uh, communication science topics so that participants can take these tangible ideas back with them and act as a way to promote them in their work. Uh, but first, we're going to uh, start with an update on the status of the Forest Ecosystem uh, Monitoring Cooperative from Jim Duncan, the director. Right. Uh, thank you, Steve. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being here. It's great to see all, uh, a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new faces today. Um, I just wanted to give a real brief update of the State of the Cooperative, as Steve mentioned, this is our first year uh, with a new acronym, a new name, a new website, but uh, really, more importantly, a new focus on regional issues around monitoring the forest ecosystem condition. And what is the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative? It is these five states as partners in each of these five states working together to synthesize trends and get forest health information and data across the region. And why we do this, why we need to do this, is because it gives us this unique nimble, high-quality, analytical monitoring service. So that's our niche, that's what we're after, and that's what we think we can do. And I'm going to talk about a couple of examples of what we've been up to in the last year to try and make this happen. 
Um, but really wanted to think about these three things. This is what we've been focusing on as a cooperative over the last years. How can we be nimble? How can we respond quickly to the, tr the trends, the issues that people are interested in? How can we get beyond a two or three year planning cycle and actually focus in tomorrow on the things that are mattering to you? Uh, we're looking to be dynamic, moving beyond um, just our core staff and being able to reach out to cooperative to student workers, to any partners who can help us um, move the agenda forward and get more information available and on the ground. And we're trying to fill this unique niche. We have this mandate to work outside of an initial, a single agency, we're working outside of a single discipline. Um, we're really, our mandate is to, to be that uh, organization that works across those places, and that's a niche that we think we really have to fill. So in the last years, we've made this regional effort and really worked to expand uh, some of the things that we've been doing include data archive access and synthesis, really around a lot of apps and dashboards, so building um, a forest indicators dashboard, uh, Northeastern Forest Health Atlas, expanding the Denver Ecological Database, working on data entry portals and information delivery portals to try and get more information out of our archive and into a format that's more readily usable. Some people like to download CSVs, but a lot of people want to see a map or see a summary indicator. So we're working on those products. Something like the Forest uh, Health Atlas is taking data back to 1918. It's been digitized, standardized up to current codes and made accessible online so you can map it, you can filter it, you can look more deeply into the agents such as Forest and Caterpillar that you might care about and see charts, graphs, downloads of that information. So again, thinking about trying to make the information that we're already collecting as a group more easily accessible and more easy to get into. Fragnet is compiling uh, publications, products, maps, resources on forest fragmentation. Again, making it easier to find. These have been spread across dozens, if not hundreds, of websites around the web. And great if you can find them through Google, but if you can't, you can easily find the brochure that you need to take to the legislature. Fragnet is a place to go and get to that one-stop shop for a bunch of different types of resources. You can filter by different types, easily search down for what you're looking for, and get into the information. So again, the idea is to go beyond actually collecting this stuff and making it more easy to find, to get into, to access. And finally, actually doing long-term synthesis, long-term trend analysis. Uh, we've, been, we've done another update of our, our long-term monitoring update for the state of Vermont on these 13 data sets. Uh, this is the third year that we've done this report. Um, and this year we're also excited to have our first version of a regional report where we take three of those data sets that are spanning the five state region and actually look at long-term trends in those data sets and what 2016 held for uh, things such as acid precipitation or uh, forest disturbance. So these are just a couple of examples of things that we've been up to in the cooperative. And um, looking ahead, the things that we are going to be focusing on on a regional scale right now include forest fragmentation. This has consistently been identified as a real challenge for a broad range of forest ecosystems. And I don't think I'm going to have to explain really why to this group. I think most people here understand that there is a real concern about what fragmentation means for forest products industries, for forest ecosystem integrity, for wildlife movement. Another one that we'll be focusing on is looking at standardization of uh, methods and measurements to make individual state programs cross-compatible and make them talk better to each other so that we can more easily bring together data from multiple states to get a better understanding of what's going on. And looking at ecologically relevant climate change indicators, expanding and building upon the great work that's already been done on climate science to bring more ecologically relevant indicators to the region. So these are three of our ongoing efforts. We just had a meeting with our partners yesterday to look at a year ahead and start thinking about what other regional issues we need to focus on. But really, our committees and our staff of six can't do it without the cooperative. So we need you to be involved, and there's great ways to get involved. If you think one of these tools will quite hit the mark, and you want to tell us why, we need that input. If you think that there's a need for monitoring and coordination, uh, we would love to hear from you. And identifying gaps in decision-making support and contributing data to the archive of ways that you can help support the cooperative and expand our work, really mobilize and build on what we're all doing. So that's my, my brief pitch. I'm happy to talk to anyone about what else is going on in the region because it's, it's a lot, but I do want to stop and acknowledge our core funders. Um, Forest Service, Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, and the Ravinsky School have been providing 
operational funding and support for this program for a long time and continue to do so. And we're lucky to be able to bring in other funders for specific monitoring programs. A little bit here, a little bit there helps us keep going the mercury mock deposition record or the uh, ask precipitation record or expanding forest ecosystem monitoring on uh, national forest land. <coughs> and of course, I want to thank our staff, uh, Jen Pontius, uh, the principal investigator, as well as um, our core staff, Mim, our site operator, uh, Mike Finnegan, who happens to be in Antarctica. I'm sure he would much rather be here, but he's on the wrong side of the world. And then John Prime, who's our project coordinator. And we're really excited to be um, announcing that on Monday, Alex Siba will be joining us as a project coordinator. So we've got a great staff, great dynamic group of people working. And we've also benefited this last year from uh, Emma Tate, Judy Rosofsky, Ismar, and Caroline, who've worked with us in the office and our 2017 uh, field season rock stars. So I just want to take a moment to thank them um, and say that we do have one very, very special thank you uh, from a staff perspective that I want to take a moment for today. Ms. Um, Pendleton is uh, potentially attending her last conference as an FDMC staff member. And she started here 25 years ago, we think. She's always been a bit cagey about that detail, and actually no one knows. And it's been a critical foundation for the FDMC. Um, her meticulous attention to detail has set the standard for high quality monitoring data collection and site maintenance. I've learned a lot from her, and I know a lot of others have. The Underhill site would not be what it is without her years of work. And I did a quick tally of all of the work that she has done at the site. Um, she's been battling cold, heat, mice, birds, and snakes, and conservatively, Conservatively, she's collected over 5,000 samples out there, and has been directly responsible for the generation of more than 240,000 data points on atmospheric deposition for Vermont's forests. I mean, that's, that's something. She's been making things happen for our long-term updates for the annual conference we've seen today. And if there's one thing that I've learned from him in the five years I've known her, it says she, she hates fanfare, pomp, circumstance, and having people give speeches about her. So um, I couldn't let this pass, though. I apologize. But man, thank you so much for everything you've done. figured out yet. I'm moderating this uh, morning, so gonna, I didn't need to use the stepmaster today when I worked out. I did it on my own. Um, uh, in addition to Mim, uh, we also want to recognize uh, 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 someone else. And uh, in fact, uh, it's, it seems that we've been doing this quite a bit lately. A couple years ago, uh, we recognized the pioneer of forest ecosystem monitoring following his death, uh, Dr. Huff Oberman and the important work that he did uh, on uh, Camel's Hump as well as throughout the state. And, but today we get to honor someone that's still with us. And to do that is a uh, longtime aide and the state field rep for Senator Patrick Leahy on, the, uh, on ag and natural resource issues and uh, recently retired as the state director of the Farm Services Agency. And I'll uh, have uh, Bob Paquin come up to the all right um, you know when I was uh, first asked to say a few words about uh, Sandy Wilmot um, where's Sandy okay. I can't. Well, you should be up front somewhere. At least, at least stand up and wait. Um, there we go. Uh, anyway, when I was first asked to say a few words in recognition of, of Sandy's uh, contribution to our monitoring cooperative, uh, what often happens with me is a few words just come to mind immediately, uh, and and. With respect to Sandy, the first word is calm, steady, uh, professional, and nice. Uh, pretty much encapsulates it from my experience working with her over the years. 
Um, interestingly, a few people sent Jim some comments, uh, a few uh, colleagues, and uh, Carl Waite said uh, uh, his words, I'm just pulling the key words out of his, out of his statement, was nurturing, uh, leadership, and dedication. Pretty solid there. Um, Tim Shabatskoy, um, easy going, but focused uh, and with a way of working with people, calm and optimistic. Pretty good there. Tom Villers uh, from NRCS, uh, this is great, collaborator and a gatherer of people. Pretty good. Uh, loves creating new partnerships. Um, networking ability and um, the cornerstone of monitoring. That's pretty good. Um, and then finally, um, if I can just read this. Um, Excuse me. Uh, when you, one can't read what's on the writing. Oh, if Sandy was taking care of something, it would always turn out great. There we go. So back to it, calm, steady, professional, and nice. So Sandy, uh, we'd love to have you say a few words, but we don't want to embarrass you. So if you just want to give the princess a wave, uh, it's a thank you from all of you.